So, do you believe rate cuts are on the horizon and that they're a genius move by the Federal Reserve to land this plane smooth and slow? Or a self-sabotage on our way to a stagflation? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And again, tomorrow, first reminder is the CPI report. Well, we will find out if the Fed is right. If the Fed was able to land the economy softly, not degrade jobs too badly, and give us low inflation, right? Are you going to believe the narrative or are you going to believe your lying eyes, as they would say? Hope you're having a wonderful start to your day. And first of all, let's talk about what the expectations are for Fed cuts. And, and then I'll give you my opinion of what I think is going to happen, right? So first of all, we're expecting minimum 25 basis points at the next Fed meeting. There is a 0% chance. Let me rephrase that. A 0 negative percent chance that you get a Fed halt, right? Where they just don't give you a rate cut, especially with the last jobs report. If you've been living in Iraq, it came in bloody poor, right? Now, no one has jobs. No one's creating new jobs, uh, less jobs created, bad, bad, bad. And we can look at a couple things in this video that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about oil. We'll talk about the beautiful Apple and how excited investors are and some other relevant factors that are coming into the market to know where the macro economy is going. And also we're going to separate that where the stock market is going. I want to separate those two things because everyone gets very, very confused that they're the same. And they're not, and we're gonna explain that to you in today's video. So let's get started. First of all, let's dive into what the actual expectations are for this year, right? Currently, we are at a 525 to 550 uh, basis points. The market consensus is 425 to 520. That's literally 1% of rate cuts in three meetings. Well, let's do the math real quick. How do you get there? Well, you need 150 at minimum. So there's somewhere a 50 sprinkled in there and consistently cutting in all scenarios. There is not really anyone on the market right now that is pricing in an expectation of no cuts. Like, you know how Jerome Powell went from uh, hiking, hiking, hiking to pause, hike, pause, hike. No, we're just going the classical route of what happens during every Fed rate cut cycle where we're just going to slap rate cuts all the way. However, usually that means something is broken in the economy. And is it going to be a blunder like he mentioned with his shipmates comment? And if you guys haven't seen that, highly recommend you check that out, that we're basically going to win the battle against inflation and we have to pivot to a new jobs outlook, right? We need to change the mandate, as Jerome Powell said. And we will know that simply by looking at the expectations for CPI. Again, the market cares about CPI, but the Fed necessarily doesn't, right? They have a preferred indicator, PCE and core. So the core number, which is not having expectations published yet, and I don't believe the expectations will be published at the time of this video releasing, they're expecting 3.2. I've heard a multitude of banks talk about that they want 3.2, right? That's where they're expecting 3.1. So not a lot of progress on core. So what will that mean in the grand scheme of things for the Federal Reserve? In my opinion, they're going to ignore it because, again, the jobs numbers came in so poorly with revisions that they have to shift their mandate to it. And does that mean that we allow a stagflation to occur? Does that mean that we allow various things to come crush the economy? Well, if we look at just simply the enthusiasm in the markets, we can know where it's going, right? Simply put, let's take a look at the markets and we can see that stocks like NVIDIA, right? Those risk on assets did pretty okay today, but they weren't fantastic. We were covering this last night on the live stream for Bitcoin. Here's one of the problems. We didn't get back above the 50 day moving average and that is, or sorry, 200 day moving average. And that is a huge problem. So where does this mean that we're going to be going for Bitcoin? I did a video on that. That'll be linked down in the description below for all of you to see. So you can check out that in the description below. And also, if you were wondering what's going on with the markets, right? Market had a nice uh, gap up day, but not really a lot of movement. There was a lot of chop in today's. We came over and we did these levels for you guys on the weekend deep dive will be linked down in the description below. So if you want to catch all that content when it comes out, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and have bell notifications on so you don't miss a video. You don't miss what these key levels are to know what's going on in the market so you're never confused. Again, because as I said, a wealth of information is never too broad, right? You can never have too many sources of information. So let's keep it simple for everyone, right? We said 539.44 on the S&P and 548.97 were the two levels that we were going to be looking at. 
we didn't get to either. So we basically sat on our hands all day. I personally didn't partake in the bullish trade. I did last night on stream, so you guys can check that stream out. I have all that link in the description below, the Bitcoin video, the weekend deep dive, and the stream, so you can all check that down below. And while you're down there, check out our Discord. We can interact with us. We do a stream every single Sunday open where you guys can chat with us and be live on stream. Kind of unique where you get to be the host, right? Where you get to interact with us live on stream, interact with all the viewers and everything. It's a fantastic time. Highly recommend you check that out. Link down in the description to the Discord as well. So going back to the markets, 548.97, where, where are we going with that, right? Do we have the potential for the bullishness? And I did say that we have to take a look at a VIX, we have to take a look at the NASDAQ and the weekend deep dive. Right now we haven't gotten back above 548.97, and then that is concerning because we are not above bullish territory. So until that number occurs, and we have to see how we play into CPI, I personally would sit on my hands going into CPI, I would like to see a little bit of a lower retracement to kind of give a false sense of security to the bears and then rally on CPI if we're going to get that bullish print and that bullish interpretation. Be very cautious with CPI that it doesn't run your portfolio over. We have seen crazy runs in CPI, 200, 300 points in the market that have been completely washed away in a matter of minutes. I have traded those and they have wrecked me, so I do not want that to happen to you. Wait for that reaction to stabilize and then trade the reaction, right? Don't try to predict it. Don't go buy calls today. Don't buy puts today. If you want, that's your own risk. But I personally don't like trying to guess which side it's going to go. I have not made consistent money doing that. I've been making consistent money by looking at the reaction that it's going to be. And I did say we need to take a look at VIX. And VIX did something very good for all the bulls out there. It went lower has not gone below the 1920 tr threshold. So again, VIX is still in that area where we have to be cautious in the market. This thing could come rip our face off anytime. However, we did also see the fear and greed index kind of ticked back up, meaning there's more bullish momentum building in the market. So that gives me an indication that this may continue along with the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ having an interesting day today. We actually came to the low nearly at 449.34, which was the previous all-time high rotation. Now, this means we have stopped going down, but we have not broken out of the previous candles range. When we do that, basically breaking above 461 or below 448, then we can say, okay, we're in this coil that we are here and we break out to the upside, we continue. We break to the downside, we break down. It's as that as simple as I can make it for you, ladies and gentlemen, because that's how simple the market can be. If we break this level, you short, you go break this level, you go long. It's as simple as I can make it. And if you need some more help with that, make sure you guys join the Discord. And also, the upper movement for the NASDAQ has been lower. 473.33 was previously now 471.75 because it's the 50-day moving average period. As it shifts over, that's where we're going to be looking for our targeted bullish approaches. So again, if you guys want more detail of what happened with this, make sure you check out the link in the description below the Weekend Deep Dive video. I dive into way more detail that I'm not going to be covering here in this video. But the king, the king, Apple, 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 right? What happened to Apple Day? Because everyone wants to know. And I'm going to give you a guess when the uh, Apple event came out. And then you tell me where it was. If you guess this big hump right here, congratulations, you are completely correct. Apple announces its new iPhone 16 launch. Analysts previously noted 30 to 60 day recovery trend. And as we can see here on the chart, Apple announces the event and then some sells off, right? Goes right back to where it was. Not really much of a bullish day for Apple. They really didn't announce anything revolutionary. They, people aren't excited for their stock. I remember previous Apple events, this thing be up 3 4%. Measly 0.04%, barely in after hours actually selling off. So what does that mean for Apple stock in the long term, right? Below the 50 day moving average, showing lower lows, we broke to a new low today. The question is, are we gonna come back down to that $194 number? And maybe Warren Buffett selling this company wasn't a bad thing, right? Considering that this Apple event wasn't very, very uh, bullish. It wasn't really enthusiastic. It wasn't building a lot of enthusiasm. So the question is, are you enthused about Apple? Or are you not? Throw them down in the comment section below. I really want to hear your thoughts. And now where the soul crushing piece of the video is for those that have student loan debt, right? Student loan debt defaults set to for a comeback. Again, as more legal challenges occurred, student loan debt and student loan forgiveness, 
this is where things get really a reckoning coming for them, right? As the article describes here, um, debt straddle Americans face uh, to keep up with payments are set to worsen next month as incoming expiration of crucial protection threatened to push them closer to the edge of delinquency. Again, student loans is the only loan you can't actually declare bankruptcy, but you can be in delinquency for all eternity for it. Again, um, government data shows that student loan repayments have declined since the pandemic. Well, if you don't make them pay, obviously they ain't gonna do it. While payments resumed last year, transfer from the Department of Education to the Treasury have dropped from 7 billion last summer to 4.1 billion last month. This marks the lowest reading since the 2014, excluding the pandemic related freeze. Again, this goes back to the consumer is not strong. As we saw in today's report, where we actually got consumer credit. Everyone looked at this as a bullish thing. Consumers are consuming more credit, so they're spending more. Again, if you believe this chasing money chasing amount of goods, this is inflationary along with the consumer stretch. They're turning to debt to fund their lives. As we will see in the CPI report, I personally think that the CPI report is gonna come in line with a 2.6 expectation and 3.2 is my expectation for core and the resulting number may shock markets because they, they you don't know which one they're gonna fixate on. They could very easily fixate on the 2.6 number because they want to feel happy-go-lucky. That doesn't necessarily mean that inflation is conquered. We have to look at core. And will that give the Federal Reserve enough of a green light for 50, right? Will they use that to justify a 50 basis rate hike? Uh, sorry, cut. And the question is, with that 50, are the chances going to go from 70-30 to 30-70, right? We have to see how that all plays out. How this all plays out. Throw in the comment section below what you think is going to happen. Do you think the fight on inflation has won? Do you think the Federal Reserve is coming in for a soft landing? Or are they heading to the cliff of disaster? I really want to know your thoughts. Thank you all so much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.